Hey, I'm Vanessa with Ortho Refresh. Today we're going to review hand and wrist terminology, directions, anatomy. Go ahead and grab a piece of paper. The first thing we're going to do is trace our left hand. If you are left handed, sorry about that. That's how I've got this set up for today's purposes. After tracing your left hand, we're going to label the digits. So we don't number them. That gets confusing. Some people say it's a thumb and four digits. Other people say it's five digits. So what is it? Well, to avoid confusion, we label them what they are. Thumb, index, long or middle, ring, small or little. We use this terminology when we're talking on the phone, in our documentation. This way we avoid any confusion. In the bottom right corner, draw a diagram or a compass, north, south, east, and west, and another arrow in the southwest corner and one in the northeast corner. So further away from the center of the body, we use distal and closer to the center of the body, proximal. The southwest arrow refers to the top of the hand or dorsal. And the northeast arrow refers to this side of our hand, right? Volar or palmar. Okay. The bones in the forearm, remembering where those are, radius is on the thumb side and ulna is on the other side. So back to our diagram, things this way in the hand and wrist are ulnar and things that way are radial. This will be helpful with splinting, with describing where lacerations are or which ligament we're concerned about. Now to the joints. There's the MCP or MP joint for metacarpal phalangeal. Then there are two IP joints, interphalangeal. One is more distal, one's proximal. The thumb has the MCP joint also. And then it just has one IP joint. It's neither distal nor proximal. At this point, you can keep drawing or you can just watch. It's up to you. It was really helpful for me when I learned that the radius has a lunate fossa and scaphoid fossa. You can say scaphoid or scaphoid, doesn't matter. But then I learned, okay, lunate sits in the lunate fossa and scaphoid sits in the scaphoid fossa. That makes sense. Forget about that acronym from school, right? Now to the metacarpals. This is the first metacarpal. And at the base here, I'm gonna draw a couple bones. We're not gonna go over all the bones, but just a couple here. So this first joint at the base of the metacarpal is the first CMC joint or thumb CMC joint. The bone that articulates with metacarp the first metacarpal is trapezium. And the way to remember this is base of thumb trapezium. See, it rhymes. The next little bone to trapezium is trapezoid. So this joint here where scaphoid articulates with these two is called the STT joint. That's a common joint where people get arthritis. For the metacarpals, we number them, or we can call them what they are in the ray that they are. So instead of, uh, you could say second metacarpal or index metacarpal, you could say fifth metacarpal or small metacarpal. These little lines here are the CMC joints, and we do number these one through five also for the carpal metacarpal joints. Now I'm gonna draw a little to help us see where the other couple carpal bones are. Capitate sits in lunate, so we can kind of see where that is. Hamate is next to this, often looks like a triangle and then a C, and that is hook of hamate, so that's normal. A lot of patients ask about that. Just off the tip of ulnar styloid is pisiform. Again, not perfect anatomical reproduction. And pisiform sits right in front of that. I messed that up. Triquetrum is dorsal. Pisiform is volar. We will see triquetral fractures on lateral wrist x-rays, but I'm getting off topic. Thanks for watching.